Hello, welcome back. Welcome if you're new, my name is Flo. If you're not new, thanks for staying. Guys, it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. I've been craving doing one of these and <laughs> I've got a free 24 hours with nothing to do today. So I thought it's about time we did another 24 hour read a thought. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, because the last time I did it, it threw me into a massive book slump. But right now I am in the opposite of a book slump. I'm just in such a reading mood and I have been literally since the start of the year, which is so nice. And I'm a little scared this is gonna slump for me, but hopefully I'll just finish loads of books in this video and I'll feel even more accomplished. Because you know that feeling when you take a new book off a good reads and you're like, oh yeah, I am ready for the next one. I think that's how this is gonna go. So, in terms of TBR for this video, I'm just gonna stick with my March TBR, which we did by the TBR jar, which if you haven't seen, I'll link it up there. So the, the books in question are Hunger by Michael Grant, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. Play we picked for this month is One Minute by Simon Stevens. I definitely wanna get to that in this video because that only should take me like an hour. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I am on page 20 of this currently and love, freaking love. Red Rising by Pierce Brown, which is a sci-fi. Song for Dark Times by Ian Rankin. That was the one I think The Wheel chose during that video, so that's quite a rogue one. But I feel like I loved his books back in the day, so hopefully I still do. Uh, the Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and then Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey, which it is currently just after 9.30 in the morning. It's 9.36, to be precise. I need to start a timer. Oh, actually, let's let, before we do that, let's select the first book. I think I'm going to mood read this 24 hours just to keep it enjoyable for myself. Otherwise, I'm not going to want to do these videos. So I think we're going to go with Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney because, as I said, I read 20 pages of this in Wales in November. Um, completely loved it. And I just put it down. I had other videos to film and I just kind of never got back to it. And it's always been in the back of my mind of like, I want to finish this because I was obsessed. Um, and I really do think this could be a five star book. So I think this is the first book we're gonna do. Okay, it is now 9.38 a.m. and we are gonna start the timer. Oh yeah. All right, I okay, I'm excited, let's get started. Uh, I've made it to a whopping page 23. You'll remember we were on page 20. Um, it's literally about 40 seconds later. I've just realized I haven't brushed my teeth. So I'm gonna go do that and then we're gonna read. All right, take two, we're gonna actually read now. Friends, we are now 21 hours 42 in, down. We haven't done 21 hours, that would be insane. Uh, so we've been reading for, quick maths, quick maths. I don't know, like a bit over two hours, like maybe two hours 15-ish. And I've made it to page 136 of Conversations with Friends. So I'm probably 40% through, I would say. Oh, folks, I I love, oh, this is such a good book to start with. I love this so much. I will say, when I originally started this, I was convinced that this was a romance and like, I understand where I got that from. It was like, oh, it's a book about relationships, but it's it's not a romance. It's a literary fiction, which is great because that is probably my favorite genre. I very much enjoy romance too, but literary fiction's about relationships, even better. But I will say this falls very neatly into what I have dubbed as my favorite ever genre. I don't know if I've ever spoken about this on this channel, but I have a very, very specific favorite genre, which is literary fictions about women in their twenties who are morally gray. Like it's, it's a specific category. And this is exactly what this is. This follows Frances. She is 21 and she's uh, like in a poet, duo like there's two of them they do poetry and they basically meet this couple called melissa and nick it's kind of about like francis's francis there's no better way to say that it's about francis's inappropriate relationship with nick because nick is married to melissa um but it's kind of like everybody has quite complicated relationships francis and bobby bobby is her um like poetry partner and the two of them used to date and now they're like, they're friends, but they're like, they have a complicated relationship. And 
and it's so fun. Love those like complicated relationships. And Frances is like not perfect. She's really not. And that, that makes it so much more special to me. But don't get me wrong, I love a fluffy romance story as much as anybody else, but there's something about the like dark edge that comes with literary fiction that just gets me. I already know this is a five star read. Like maybe it won't be, maybe it won't be, but like it is. Spoilers, it is a five star read. <laughs> Obviously she's got this like quite unusual writing style where she doesn't put dialogue in quote marks and it takes like a, a little bit of adjustment to get used to it and to figure out who's speaking but honestly past like the first 10 pages I really like it didn't bother me and I didn't really like it just flowed beautifully and it gives it this like really unique but like beautiful storytelling. I just love this sorry I'm such a little fangirl like I'm very happy um, and it's a great start to the readathon because I'm not burnt out at all. I mean, I'm literally two hours in. If I was burnt out already, there would be an issue. But I'm, yeah, I'm literally just gonna sit and crack on with this now. And I'm very excited. And I will check in with you when I've read a bit more. We have just dipped under the 20 hour mark. So we're in the 19s now. I mean, it's still basically 20, but it feels more achievable. Uh, we're on page 219 of Conversations. That's like over two thirds, no? Maybe exactly two thirds. Still loving it, still freaking loving it. I don't think I have anything else to update. I'll be checking with you when I finish this, but it's 1.40 now. We've been reading since, what, 9.40? So it's been just over four hours and I'm a happy girl. I'm happy, I'm chilling, reading my little book. Yeah, I could not have had a better start to this 24 hour reading fun than this book. Like this, this is gonna be one of my favorite books of the year, I reckon. I love it so much. I finished, I finished, I finished the book. The, 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 oh, the last line of this got me. The last line of this is why I love literary fiction. I can't, I can't explain what I mean by that other than that sort of like realness, the gritty, the like being in your 20s, making mistakes, all of, oh, oh, loved loved this book. I'm now so excited to read Normal People because I know well, a lot of people say they prefer Normal People to this but I adored this. I love the TV show of Normal People. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I really wanted to start Normal People now but I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, we are sticking to the TBR. But 17 hours 45 minutes remaining so the last time I spoke to you I was, I had 100 pages to go so I think that took me just over two hours to do those final 200 pages, you can probably see, I have some chocolate down there. I have been snacking to keep myself focused. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I adored this book, five stars, beautiful read. I am now like, yeah, okay, we can do something else now. Let's go outside or go do something completely different. However, that's not how these videos work, so we do need to start a new book. But we have got off to quite literally the best start we possibly could have got off to in this video, which is sick. I'm so happy about this. I'm so happy I finally got to it as well. That is the first book of the video done and it took us just over six hours. So that's that's not too shabby. Um, I think the chocolate helped me. I think I might make a coffee. Um, and I'm tr basically, I'm trying to think what to do next. Let's go to the book pile. Okay, we've come over to the book cart. I don't think I said in the last clip, but it's about I think it's about 4 p.m. ish. So we have been reading for pretty much the entire day. My gut instinct of like what I want to start next is the Midnight Library, but I'm a little apprehensive to start another literary fiction back to back. So I'm half thinking I might read the play now because it's literally this is a collection of plays, so it's not all of this. It's only only 71 pages. So it's just that little bit there. So I'm half thinking we can do that. We can definitely bash that out in like an hour. Um, and then maybe start the Midnight Library or possibly something else. But I kind of think that might be the plan of attack for now, just to give my brain a bit of a break. I've always found plays easier to like get my head around. Like when I was a kid, I would always, whenever, whenever I was reading books as a kid, I would always like skip ahead to the dialogue and I would just skip out all the descriptions, which makes reading a book really difficult because as it turns out, those descriptions and all that other stuff is there for a reason. It's actually quite complicated reading a book with only the dialogue, but it's just something I always did. And so when I got a bit older and I started reading plays, I was like, oh my God, this is so easy. So sometimes when I'm like feeling like a little bit, not tired, I mean, it's literally 4 p.m. I'm not tired, but I feel like my brain needs a bit of a reset. So I'm thinking 
we'll do the play now. So the play we had for this month is a Simon Stevens play called One Minute. And it says it is set in London in the aftermath of the disappearance of an 11 year old girl. So probably like a dark, sad drama I'm expecting. But yeah, I think we're gonna be able to bash this out really, really quickly. So I think I'm gonna start this now and I will check in with you in a little bit. It's a bit weird, but I do sometimes quite like sitting on the floor to read. So I think while I read the play, I might just, I don't know, sit on the floor and, and get cozy and, and read one minute. Uh, yeah, I'm still on the floor. I, I thought I was gonna get up and move, but I just never did. So here we are, finished the play. It is, it took a little longer than I expected. We've got 15 hours 47 left on the timer. So I can't really remember where we were at last time, but I reckon that took maybe an hour 30, give or take. Ended up being a really, not, no, fun's the wrong word. I enjoyed my time reading it. It's not a fun play. It's, it's quite a sad, gritty play. It's basically about this girl called Daisy, who is a child and she goes missing. It's basically like almost, the aftermath of everything to do with that so it follows two like detectives like two police officers the mum and then like two like kind of like witnesses like people from london and it basically follows like the aftermath of this disappearance and like how it's affecting different people and it's kind of about like grief but it's also like a lot to do with like life in london and, and living in london and i think if you're british or from like london or something you'll probably feel very connected to it. It also has that uh, writing style that I just absolutely adore from Simon Stevens. He just has the most uh, natural writing style. Like all of his dialogue just sounds like it was taken verbatim. Like I feel like this man must have studied verbatim writing. I really, really enjoyed this. I mean, I am yet to read a Simon Stevens play I haven't enjoyed. Um, all of them are like, brutal and sad well maybe not all of them all the ones I've read have been brutal and sad because I've also read from this book Seawall which is like a it's a very very short play it's like a it's basically one monologue it's like a one man play about I don't know how to describe it without spoiling it it's incredibly sad basically I love Simon Stevens writing it's just it's really, really sad. To cheer myself up, I'm gonna read The Midnight Library, which I don't think is remotely happy. I think we're about eight hours in and we've finished the whole of Conversations with Friends and we've finished one minute. And now we're gonna start The Midnight Library, which is another quite short one. So I do think 288 pages. So again, we should be able to get through this fairly quickly. Um, it is currently six o'clock now. I have also, I will say, downloaded the audiobook for this just because don't know what I'm showing you just in case you want to know what it looks like um just because I thought I'm gonna make dinner at some point um and so maybe I can listen to that while I'm eating just to make sure it's a a true 24 hours um and also it might be nice to give my eyes a bit of a break because I don't think it's good for you to stare at a paper like this far away from your face for an entire day. Um, so it'd probably be good for me. I'm gonna read for a little bit now. I probably won't cook for like another hour or so. But yeah, I'm very excited to start this. Um, I'm gonna try and go into this as blind as possible. I don't really feel like reading the blurb. I know it's about a girl called Nora, who um, I think she either wants to take her own life or tries to, and she kind of ends up in this like purgatory. And it's meant to be like her trying on all different lives she could have experienced or something. That's all I know. We're going to find out now because I'm going to read it now and I will let you know. Okie doke. It is a little later. I have had some dinner. I have been listening to the audio for a little bit while I was like making food and eating and stuff. I listened to the audiobook. Uh, so it is now coming up on nine o'clock. It's about 10 to nine. We have got another 12 hours 49 to go. It has occurred to me halfway through that it probably would have been so much easier if I did like a stopwatch. I think I'll do that next time. But anyway, 
either way, that means you've been reading for about, see, if I'd, if I'd done the stopwatch, I wouldn't have to keep doing maths. Um, it means we've done about 11 hours, 10 minutes. I think, nobody check that. Um, but we've made it to page 102 of the Midnight Library. It kind of starts off with Nora and it's like her normal life, but her life is, she's had lots of like situational problems. She's like grieving, She's she's got like lots of situational things going on in her life. And basically there's like one final thing that happens and she's just like, this is all too much. Um, and she basically decides to take her own life. And when she does that, she gets transported to this sort of like, it's kind of like magical realism, but like not really, it's only a touch of that, but she gets transported to this library. Um, and basically this librarian is helping her to go into these like different lives. And basically you kind of get to see like all these different versions of Nora's life if she'd made different decisions. And there's this thing called the book of regrets, where it's basically like everything that Nora's regretted in her life. And she kind of can decide to like go down the path of something if she'd changed that thing if that makes sense so like in one of them she regrets for example not moving to Australia with her friend so she gets to experience that life the writing style is is so engaging and I mean the chapters are so short I've got ADHD man I like a short chapter I feel now like I've had a rest <laughs> my eyes have been rested I've had some food I feel ready to tackle it. It is a couple hours later, I have not moved positions. It is currently 10.40 p.m. So we have just gone past the 13th hour, if I've done the maths correctly. It's starting to get a bit tired, I'm not gonna lie. I can tell I am because my reading has slowed down quite a lot. It's been, what's it been like? Just under two hours. And I've made it to page 161, so I think that's, only about 60 pages um so yeah I can tell that my my mind is slowing down it's not even like that late it's yeah it's 20 to 11 like I'm not in the danger zone yet like I'm okay I'm gonna have a coffee but I think it's just something about staring at like books all day just makes me tired but it's all right I'm just over halfway through the book and I'm still really enjoying it but I do need some coffee um, but as I say, not in the danger zone yet. I still, <laughs> we can still definitely stick it out, but I just, just need to wake up a little bit, I think. Um, it is half 11, so we are, oh, it's so late to do maths. Half 11. We've got 10 hours left, so what does that mean? We've done 14 hours of reading. That's a lot of reading, man. I think, I am getting really tired, I'm definitely slowing down. I've made it to page 192, but we are making progress. I'm nearly two thirds through, I would say. I think I'm gonna take my makeup off and like get ready for bed and like get into bed. But I am gonna try and finish this tonight. I'm definitely gonna try and stay up a little bit longer, but I do think I'm probably gonna have to go to sleep at some point and pick it up in the morning. I would love to pull an all-nighter and, and do it. I'd, I'd have to work tomorrow evening. <laughs> I, I can't be doing that. Like we've got another a bit over 100 pages to go, so I think we could definitely do that tonight. I'm gonna get ready for bed. I'll maybe talk about this book a bit while I get ready for bed, because I feel like I haven't actually really spoken about it yet. I will say, I do actually think reading for 14 hours is actually quite impressive. One, okay, no, impressive is the wrong word. But like, I'm quite, I'm impressed with myself. You guys probably aren't impressed and that's, that's fair. But like 14 hours straight reading. I feel like it's a good book for like, if you're in your twenties and like, probably not just your twenties, but you know that kind of like classic thing people talk about when you're in your twenties, you're like trying to figure out life and everything's like scary, but exciting and confusing. I feel like this is like, the perfect book to like summarize that. I mean, the character, I actually can't remember how old the character is. She's definitely older than 20s. I wanna say she's like 30s or 40s. And to be fair, I don't think it's like just a experience that like 20 year olds feel, but it's like, it falls into that category for me where it feels like really relatable to someone in their 20s. I will say though, it does, <laughs> it kind of like sparks existential crises on every other page. <laughs> Like, it's probably not the best book to read right before you go to bed because I feel like I'm just gonna like lie awake, like 
thinking about life and death now. <laughs> but that being said, I am so tired at this point. I don't think I'm gonna be lying awake. <laughs> I'm very much enjoying the book. I hope I can get it done tonight. I just need to try and stay awake a little bit. I didn't end up having a coffee, so maybe that is the answer for now. Because I reckon if I've got 100 pages left, I'm reading quite slow now that I've been getting tired. I reckon it's still gonna take another two hours, maybe slightly more, which will take us to, what we now at half 11, would take us to half one. So if we can do that, I'll be, I'll be happy with that. Yeah, is anybody surprised? I'm calling it. I tried, I really did try. It's just after midnight. Um, I'll put a screenshot of the timer, but I've got nine and a half hours left and filming on my phone, so I can't, I can't show you. I didn't finish. I'm so close to finishing. I'm on page 234, so we've literally got about 50-ish pages left. And I was like literally sitting, like I was actually lying in bed, like eyes like starting to close, being like, do I push through? But I was like, at this point, I'm not gonna enjoy it. I'm just I'm too tired. I've read for 14 and a half hours straight. I am going to go to bed and we are going to restart the timer in the morning. Good morning. I feel refreshed. <laughs> I needed that break so badly. So hi how are we doing it is the next day currently have eight hours 14 left on the timer i woke up this morning i listened to the audiobook for a little bit while i got ready for the day um and then i finished it in the physical form and i have in fact finished the book the third book well a second book and a play but the third vessel of writing no a bit like that i finished the third book of the video which is exciting I can't really remember what I ended up saying about this last night because I was so tired. Like it literally hit like 11 p.m. midnight and I was like so dead. I was just like, I just need to go to bed because like, I was so close to the end. I think I had like 50 pages left. It took me, it took me a little bit longer this morning just because audiobooks obviously read a bit slower. Between audiobook and reading, it took me like an hour and a half, like no less than that, like just over an hour. So it's like, I definitely could have finished this last night, but I was like, I'm just not going to enjoy it. As I say, I can't really remember what I said about this last night, but this is a super reflective, like almost philosophical book. And it talks a lot about like life and death and regrets. And it's kind of one of those books that just makes you like question everything in your life like in a fun way. Like I, I found this quite wholesome more than anything, even though there are like really sad dark themes. Like, I feel like the sort of story and the general like majority of it was quite wholesome and like heartwarming. Um, but it's, I think it's a great book for if you're feeling a bit lost or if you want a book that's just a bit existential or something to like reflect upon, something philosophical. It's not like super fast paced, plot, 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 but it's also very short chapters, so it does move very quickly. And it's obviously a very short book as well. It's only, it's just under 300 pages. So yeah, I enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm happy I finally got to it because I feel like I've owned this for a long time. And now we have eight hours 11 left on the timer. So we're gonna move to the book cart and we're gonna pick what is probably our final book for the video. Right, this is what we have left of uh, March's TBR. March? <sighs> I am losing my mind. The fact that we still have to do an entire day of reading today is kind of like not bumming me out, but I feel like I always do these challenges and I'm like, oh, it's just one day and it kind of ends up being two, but it's fine, it's fine. So I wanna pick a book that maybe won't take too much brain power. So I think that counts out Akatar. I don't think I can do a fantasy right now. It's also really long and I won't finish it in eight hours. I could do a romance, but I kind of, I feel like I'm not in a romance mood. I think, I think I'm going to go for Hunger. This is a reread of the series that I'm doing, so I think it will take less brain power because I have already read the book and I know like the plot and the concept and stuff, so I don't I think this should be an easy enough one to do. And I think we should, it's, it's still a long book. It is, it's still 586 pages. So it's not sure, but I think we might be able to read it in the time because like I, I'll read this quicker than usual, I think. 
Um, also, these books just have quite like an easy reading style anyway. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the second book in the Gone series by Michael Grant. The series follows basically a world in which all the adults disappear and the kids are left behind and they're stuck in this like dome and they start like developing magical powers and it's basically dystopia meets magical realism meets horror. It's a lot of fun. I really like it. I read it as a kid and I'm rereading it because I never read the last book and I want to know how the last book ends. And this is the second one. And I think, I think we're going to start this now. We have six hours 20 left. So it's been about two hours and I've made it to page 120, which means roughly we're averaging uh, 60 pages an hour, which means we do need to hurry up a little bit um, if I'm going to get this done in time. But I do feel like I'm flying through this. Obviously, I've read it before, so it's easy to kind of just, I know what's happening. I know who everyone is. I'm engrossed in the story already. I'm already invested. So it's super easy. But I did just look at the time and I was like, yeah, we're not going to finish it at this point. We're going to come like annoyingly close to finishing, but we're not going to finish. So I'm going to see if I can f focus basically and, and speed through this. But yeah, we're a solid chunk in and... I'm enjoying it because I love these books, they're super fun. It is quite a lot later. I've been reading for about four hours since I last spoke to you. So we've only got two and a half hours left on the timer. It is 3.30 in the afternoon and I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm sick of reading now. I'm sick of it, I'm over it. <laughs> and it's not the book, I'm loving the book. I've actually flown through the book. I'm over halfway. I'm actually, I'm probably 60% through on page 370. And I do love this book. But I want to go outside. I want to do something other than reading. I'm over it. <laughs> oh, but we have two and a half hours, and then I get to go to work, and I'm actually so excited to go to work because I get to I get to leave this room and I get to talk to people. But I am genuinely enjoying this book. I'm not going to talk for ages because I really want to try and finish this, and that's going to be very ambitious in two and a half hours because that's I can't do maths. I think over two hundred pages but I want to at least try. Um, but just very quickly, I am really enjoying this. Obviously, as I said before, I've read it before, so I know it's easy to follow for me, but this is kind of like the aftermath after the sort of original, the first book very much follows the like, the chaos that ensues straight after all the adults disappear and you get like the direct impact of that. Like, like for example, one of the characters called Lana, she is in a truck while her, I think it was her granddad is driving and he disappears while he's driving. So she like gets into a really nasty car crash. So it's like things like that. Like, so the first book really follows that. This book kind of follows this like settlement almost kind of thing that they're trying to build and they're trying to like put systems into place. And obviously as the title suggests, this one very much follows like, they're starting to have food shortages because you know, at the end of the day, they're all kids, they're all like, 15 and younger so they're not necessarily being the most sensible with supplies and stuff and it kind of follows Sam who's the main guy trying to get everyone to be sensible and put systems in place but obviously like a bunch of 11 year old kids don't want to be sensible they're not worried about the future whereas he's like this might be forever this might be for a really long time we have to be sensible with our supplies um so it's kind of yeah the like aftermath of the whole situation. And I just love this series. I'm very happy to be back in it. And yeah, I'm gonna try now and finish. We've got, was it two and a half hours left? We're either gonna do it or we're gonna just miss it, which will be annoying. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna power through now and probably the next time I see you, I will either have finished this book or finish this challenge. Either way, happy, because I don't wanna do this anymore. I want a break, I'm tired. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. I didn't finish. Oh, I'm on, I'm literally on well page five oh one. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like eighty pages from finishing. Oh, I'm like mixed emotions because I'm happy it's done, but I wanted to finish the book. <laughs> I need to go to work right now, <laughs> but um, I will check in with you 
after work. Maybe I'll finish this book and then I'll wrap up this video so I can just like talk about the book and give final thoughts and stuff. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my time. This was a fun 24 hours, but I now don't want to read anymore. I want to leave this room. Hi lovely people. It is actually a few days later. I wanted to finish Hunger before I spoke to you, which I now have not completely done. Obviously, as I've said a million times, this is a reread for me, but I still, there's just something in my heart that just has such a place for this series. It moves super quickly. It's got this proper like dystopia meets horror vibe, but it's, it's not horror. It's just got like horror elements. There are like bits where there are like creatures and there are like some scarier moments, but for the most part, I mean, it's young adult. It's not scary. Also, I'm a wuss. Sorry, I shouldn't have said horror. I've made it sound like this is a scary book. I'm a wuss. If I can handle it, I promise you can handle it. Anyway, I thought we would just wrap up our reading because we have in fact spent 24 hours reading and I'm pleased to announce I'm not in a book slump. Which I'm very grateful for because I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit worried at the end there. I was a little bit worried. But no, I've, I've read a whole other book since. In 24 hours, we did in fact get through all of these, which is very exciting. So to summarise, we first read Sally Rooney's Conversation with Friends. It was my first Sally Rooney book. I am now so excited to read Normal People. I also have Beautiful World, What Are You? But I think that one's a little bit different. But I'm still really excited because I just love her writing style. I think this might be one of my favourites of the year. I mean, it's early days. It's early days, so hard to tell. But I just adored this. I loved it. Then we read The Play, which was One Minute by Simon Stevens. And I'm so happy I've read another Simon Stevens play because it's been a hot minute for me since I've read one. And I just love his writing style. It is so natural, so easy to like fly through. And yeah, I haven't ever read a play of his that I don't like. And I haven't seen a play of his either on stage live that I haven't liked. So I feel like he's just like an instant win for me. I like everything he does. Then we read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and this was philosophical, reflective. It properly put me into like existential crisis mode but like in a fun way. <laughs> if you want to like think about your life, a great one. If you want to like have really deep thoughts about life and death and relationships and all the things that make up your life and your regrets and all of that, that is all in here and it's a good fun time and it is sad there's definitely darker themes in it but I think overall it's actually quite a wholesome book in my opinion maybe I don't know I also was so sure I had such a set idea on how this was going to end um and I was very wrong but I was like the whole way through I was like this is going to be how it ends and it did not so I don't know what my point is there but just yeah <laughs> A fun time, I enjoyed it, I'm glad I finally got to it. And then finally, which I've just spoken about, we read Hunger, which is the second book in the Gone series. And we can now move on to the third one, which is Lies. 24 hours worth of reading. I wonder how many pages that I'm actually gonna top the pages just because I'm interested. So Hunger was 585 pages. We read 500 pages of that in the 24 hours, so we'll count that as 500. Then The Midnight Library is 288. Play was 71 and Conversations with Friends was 321. So our grand total is 1,180 pages. That's pretty decent. I read 1,180 pages in 24 hours. I will take that. What a great use of my life. <laughs> anyway, if you've stuck around to this point, you're a real one. You're so cool. And you should probably subscribe it just makes sense but for real thank you so much i do really appreciate your time i love you all and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day bye